Well, hi there. Hi there. Greetings from Malibu, Southern California. We're about 5,000 miles away from you, but it's wonderful to be able to share a few words with you today. We're so thankful. We love you guys. Yes. And we just have always, all these years, had you as our church family in our heart. And it just gives us joy to be with you today. Yes. We love yes. you. Well, following that video that we've just seen, Jeannie's going to start with, with a few thoughts and words. Mm, gosh. I hope I can get through without weeping. I, I just can't believe what happened to Gerard. In fact, I can't believe what's happened to us the last 16 years. But I can tell you what I've learned and what I've experienced in my own life, I've learned and I've experienced, through it all, God turns our sorrow into joy. Mm. Yes. Isn't that the truth? It is. It is. Absolutely. And we love God's Word. Yes. Uh, we love the Psalms. And um, Psalm 30 is very special to me, and verse 11 particularly. And I'll just read it for me yeah. just quickly. You turned my wailing into dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Mm. Joy has taught me the truth of God's word, that his grace is sufficient for me. Mm. In fact, I'd say joy is the miraculous in our day. Yes, yes. But joy is a paradox. As Paul said in the Bible, sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Mm. So it doesn't mean, of course, that we don't miss our precious no. Rebecca and Alex yeah. every single day. But nevertheless, how great the greatness of God and his mystery does fill my heart with such joy, mm. almost to the point of bursting. Yes. And sometimes so much so that we... You'll find us dancing and praising the Lord. Yes. And joy is such a gift. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, darling. So let me uh, just follow on from Jeannie there, just with a definition, start with a definition of joy. Uh, I believe joy is a free gift of the Holy Spirit that flows from the belief and trust in God's promises that he loves me, and is in control of all things in my life and is working everything out for his good pleasure and my benefit as part of his eternal plan and purpose. Mm. And I believe there's three important things that we need as followers of Jesus to allow his joy to flow freely within us. First, we need to have hungry hearts for God. Secondly, we need to believe and trust in his promises. And thirdly, we need to have a different perspective. So the first point, to have a hungry heart. See, I believe those shepherds were a people who were hungry for better days. They were hungry for God to come and turn their lives around. We know the scholars tell us that they were the bottom rung of society. They were the poorest of the poor of their day. Yeah, some of them would have been born into poverty, but there would have been others, maybe a few of them, who things had not worked out in their lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had lost their finances from whatever, got into debt. Maybe they'd lost their health. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'd been driven out because of something they'd done. We know that they were at the bottom rung, and they were people who were wanting to see better days. They wanted to think, see things turned around. Mm -hmm. I guess it's pretty similar to how we are in, in the current climate with COVID-19. I suspect there's a lot of people oh. all around who, who are longing yeah, for better right. days. Mm -hmm. They're longing to see things turn around. And, you know, there's dreams that are dashed often in our lives. Things haven't worked out. I can imagine that they, during the night time, were told that they lived in the field. So they, they I don't know, they, they watched the, the sheep at night. They must have slept somewhere in the day, probably in some sort of shack. It was a pretty rough and tough, tough life. And I can imagine 
through the through the night times they would sit around the fire as they watched out for the anything that was going to eat their sheep but they would have talked about their dreams and probably would have talked about the promised messiah in the in the in the jewish belief that the messiah was going to come he would be a person of the line of david who would turn the fortunes around for the people he was who would be a one that would would make their lives better and bring their dreams make their dreams come true and you know god wants us to have Big dreams for him because he's a big God mm. and he's a wonderful God. I know, I know, for example, that, that many here would be longing for folks, uh, things to be turned around in their lives, things to, to see loved ones come to know the Lord. Amen. Maybe a relationship uh, to turn around. And I know his new life as a whole, as a body, same as Junior and I for the last 40 years, we've longed to see God turn up. We've longed to see an awakening, his presence to come. Amen. It's good to have a hungry heart. For God. It's good to have those dreams. Don't let those dreams go. But be longing for them. It says the first of the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And then in John 14, 17, it says the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Another Beatitude, Jesus said, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty, for they will be filled. So keep that hungry heart. Keep that heart that says, Lord, I'm looking for you. I want more of you. Well, secondly, we need to believe and trust in God's promises. So the shepherds had this incredible encounter with this amazing angel. Um, and you can imagine them being Love. terrified. I mean, suddenly the, 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 the curtain is drawn back and they're seeing the spiritual realm. They see these, this amazing angel and then a whole troop of angels coming. That's it. Incredible. And they had an experience. You know, it's good to experience God, a touch of his love, maybe in worship or maybe at different times in the day. You just sense God's presence. We know that so often, don't we? Yes. And those are good times. Uh, his love just comes off and I weep when he comes close to me because his love is just so wonderful. It's like liquid love coming into my heart. But, you know, we, God wants us to have on top of those experiences, undergirding those experiences, his very promises in the Holy Scriptures, mm. his very word itself that mm. we stand upon. It says in the Bible, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away, <laughs> will never pass away. Mm. And so those, those um, uh, shepherds had the promise because the angel referred them actually to something that was written 700 years ago by the prophet Isaiah, who said, this will be a sign to you. Remember, the angel said to them, this is your sign. You're going to find a baby in a stable, in a manger. Isaiah had said, this will be a sign. You're, the, the virgin will be with child. Jesus was come, coming to rescue us. Through his blood being shed on the, on the cross, he was going to make a way for our sins to be forgiven, that great barrier between us and God, that we could be forgiven and come into relationship with God again. The Saviour, Messiah, the one the scriptures spoke about, the Lord himself was coming to rescue them. And you know that we talk about God's grace, his saving grace is the blood of Jesus being shed, but also his grace, his life saves us in our everyday situations. I remember oh so well um, after Alex um, committed suicide and our, our worlds just fell apart and we were in dire straits. Mm -hmm. Our marriage was hanging on by a thread. And I remember I used to go down to my study in the night and weep until I had no more tears left to cry. And I was, yeah, desperate for God. Hung, my heart was desperate for him. Mm -hmm. But also I, I had some scriptures that I was holding on to. You see, on the surface, it looked as though God, God had abandoned us. But the Bible says that in Hebrews 13 and verse 6, it says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I had to stand on God's word. I had to stand on that great promise above all the circumstance that I was going to believe God's word above everything else. And those shepherds were being called to, to believe God's word. Yes, this is it. This is the saviour who's come to us. We believe in the, in the sovereignty of God, in, don't we, in our lives. God is sovereign. He's Lord of all and he's Lord of our specific situation. He loves us with an everlasting love and therefore he's not going to allow anything to happen in our life outside of his eternal plan and purpose. I had to believe that in our dire straits. Yes. I had to believe in the providence of God, that God is 
over every detail of our lives. We see that in the story of Job. Yes, Satan attacked him, but God was over it. God was permitting it up to a level. And God does that in our lives because he's working out his eternal plan and purpose. So we need to hold on to scripture. We need to stand, believe in scripture and trust in scripture. The third thing that's very important is that we need a different perspective. We need to see things differently. So those shepherds, they had a great experience. They were reminded of scripture. The prophet Isaiah, the prophet Micah who said, You'll find the baby born in Bethlehem. So they were literally just outside Bethlehem. What would you do when you had those words from that great the angel? Mm-hmm. Well, they wanted to check it out. Let's go and see if this is true. Let's see if we can find this baby. Mm-hmm. So off they go down into Bethlehem. And what did they find? What did they find? You know, we have our nativity scenes and it all looks really cosy, doesn't it? And lovely. And Mary's looking so wonderful. So lovely precious. blue gown and Joseph looks in total control and peaceful and the, and the lights are all on. But actually it wasn't like that at all. You see, they, they went and they found a stable. Probably was quite smelly in the stable. And they went in there and I should imagine that Joseph and, uh, and Mary were absolutely exhausted. They'd just come on this incredible journey. Mm-hmm. For you mothers out there, I was uh, with Jeannie doing the birth of our three children. Mm-hmm. It's exhausting. And she was, it was a pretty tough time for them. And I don't expect there was much light around. And she, uh, he didn't have a, Jesus didn't have a nice cashmere blanket or co- cozy. And co- no, it was cloth. He had cloth around him, we're told. So the, the shepherds came down there and they're being told, this is the Messiah. This is the saviour. This is the one who's going to rescue me and turn things around. This little baby in this dire situation. They had to have a different perspective. They had to see things differently. Mm-hmm. They had to be trusting in something beyond what they were seeing with their natural eyes. Mm-hmm. And that is the word of God. Mm-hmm. It's the promises of God. Mm-hmm. To trust those words. Mm-hmm. See, it says in Isaiah 40 in verse 31, it says, those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They shall rise up on wings as eagles. They will soar on wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Mm. Where do eagles go? They go high in the sky. And when you're high in the sky, when you're looking at things from above, things look very different to where you are on the horizontal level. They were seeing, they see things from above. And the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. Not by the things we see with our natural eyes. No, we walk with our spiritual eyes, trusting in the promises of God. You see, where we sit, we're told we're seated in heavenly places of Christ Jesus. Where we sit determines what we see. And what we see determines what we do. (laughs) And so they were looking from 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 a different perspective. Going back to my time with Alex, after Alex passed, I had to trust that God was doing something from an eternal perspective. And he showed me eternity. Can't go into all the details, but I saw so clearly that this life is but a vapour. It's blink of an eye relative to what's going to come. C.S. Lewis, it's a a cover page of a never-ending story. And as I started to see things from the eternal perspective, everything changed. Everything does change when you see things from the eternal perspective. First of all, I understood that Alex was still alive. Rebecca is still alive. Yes, we miss them desperately every day. But as Jeannie said, alongside that sorrow, we have this incredible joy that's flowing. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's flowing from deep within. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you'll have from within you rivers of living water flowing up to eternal life. You, we believe and hold on to the promises of God. Jeannie and I love uh, 2 Corinthians 4. Paul's talking about his suffering. Things hadn't gone well in his life. Things hadn't worked out as perhaps you thought an apostle should should have a life that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not Paul. And maybe things have happened in your life that didn't turn out as you'd hoped. You're going through a tough time. It's a dark time. Mm -hmm. And Paul says at the end of that chapter, it's wonderful. He said, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Mm -hmm. You see, our faithfulness to God's calling here on earth 
is will be rewarded, Jesus said, a hundredfold in this age and in the age to come. Think about that. So exciting. Yeah, the age to come. So the, the ends up that verse, it says that in that chapter, verse, uh, verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 4, it says this. Therefore, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, mm-hmm. not on that nativity scene, which is dirtier. No, but what is unseen. Mm-hmm. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Thank you. And my friends, when we hold on to those three things, there's a natural joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's a gift. But it flows so naturally that we have a hungry heart to see God and to know God. That we hold on to the very promises of God and we believe in those promises and we see things from the eternal perspective. Yes, in that environment, there is great joy. Whatever happens on the outside. Well, I think we should just close with a prayer, Diane, shall we? So, so precious. And I just love listening to you myself. Thank you, darling. It's so true. So, Father God, we do thank you so, so much for your great love for us. You, you love us with an everlasting love. We see that in Jesus, that you sent him to rescue us. Yes, our Saviour and Lord, our Lord. And we thank you that you haven't left us as orphans here. We know Jesus is back with you in heaven. But, Father, you've given us your very great and precious promises, that we can hold on to those and stand upon those, that your word can be trusted, it can be relied upon. It's true. And Lord, you've given us your Holy Spirit, Lord, to make that word real to us, to bring it into reality, the life of Jesus, his grace made real to us in our time of need. Thank you, Lord. We're so very grateful, so very grateful for this wonderful salvation we have in the person of Jesus Christ. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just want to reach out for any who are suffering now, any who are struggling, strengthen them even this day, by the power of your Holy Spirit in their inner being, that they can walk by faith, keeping their eyes on Jesus. We pray this in his name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Great, great to to say a few words with you. Take care. Thank you. We love you. Bye.